Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to look at five things which you probably don't know about the dominant seventh chords. Or if you knew them, it will be a nice lesson to kind of put all those awesome points about the chord together in one tutorial. So first off, we look at the formation of the chord and then take it from there. So if I'm on the G... To form a dominant 7 chord, you do 1, 3, 5, 7, flat. Okay, that's very important. It's not 1, 3, 5, 7. That's a major 7. So dominant 7th chord would have a major triad in it and then a 7 flat. And a way I find easy to remember the, the notes of this chord would be you take a triad and then you ask yourself, where is the 7th? The seventh would either be above the triad or it would be below the triad. Or if you're inverting the chord, let's say you're playing B, D, G, then where will be the uh, seven? There we go. It's somewhere there. So it's basically about a triad and then about finding that dominant seven. Sort of like that game Finding Waldo if you've played it. I haven't. Maybe you can tell me about it. So you go G triad and find the seven flat. Where could it be? If my fingers are here, I would probably use my pinky or my ring to play the F on top. If I'm here, I would use my... It thumb to play the 7th flat which is F and if I'm here which is the first inversion of G major there we go and if I'm here which is the second inversion of G major the F is right here isn't it okay. so let's now look at a few use cases to make the dominant 7th chord sound really awesome before we get started it will be nice if you can consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications and also my handwritten notes are waiting for you on our patreon page do consider a monthly subscription let's get cracking so i'm going to take g for now for the demonstration G dominant 7th. So the first thing I'd like to share with you with respect to dominant 7th chords is the chromatic slide. It could be the dominant 7th chord which is one step up or the dominant 7th chord which is one step down. By one step, I mean one chromatic step or one semitone as we call it. Okay. So you, you'll you find this in things like maybe this song. Da -na 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 -na. In fact, the whole uh, jailhouse rock progression is that chromatic sliding technique. It's literally part of the chord progression of the song. So you can do things, even if you're playing a 12 bar blues. They call it Stormy Monday. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah, the man and jump so pretty much wherever you want, you know, if you're on C. Basically, whenever you're stuck on a dominant seventh chord, you can kind of chromatically go up to this A flat. You can even go down to F sharp. So you can pretty much use this with a chord progression or else sneak it in, so to speak, while you're playing something which already has a, a set of existing seventh chords. You can add this in just as a flavor. The next thing I'd like to talk about is tritone inversion. So a dominant seventh chord like G7, if you go up its tritone or down its tritone, because a tritone is basically going to divide an octave into exactly two pieces. You take G7, it's pretty much equal to and sounds very similar to D flat 7th. Even though they are different in quality, if you look at the thirds and sevenths of both these chords, you take G7, G's third is B and F. That's your third and a seven flat. If you take D flat, how do you get a tritone? Tritone, three tones. G to A, one tone. A to B, second tone. B to C sharp, third tone. So tritone of G would be D flat. And a cool fact is tritone of D flat is G. So tritone of D flat is G. So tritones are inversions of each other. So if I take G seventh with the third and the seven flat... If you now just go up to D flat, 
you get d flat 7th you don't have to do anything in the right hand the right hand continues to play 3rd and 7th so what happens for the g 7th chord b would be the 3 f would be the 7th flat if i go to the d flat which is the tritone i can either go down to d flat or up to d flat if i go here what's going to happen is these same two notes will reverse their roles so this would form the 7th flat and that would form the 3 the natural 3 okay so g 7th d flat 7th both inversions of each other okay and you can do a lot of things with this concept or with this understanding you can substitute the g 7th chord whenever the time comes or whenever it doesn't destroy the melody too much by replacing it with a d flat 7 this is what we call as tritone substitution right it's a simple word tritone substitution so you're substituting one for the other so if you have a, a g 7th especially if it's the 5 of a scale g 7th is the 5 of the c major scale right so you can do things like two five one and then you can substitute out this five and do two five one it has a much more spicier sound two five one fairly traditional that's d minor seven g seventh and c while two five one so whenever possible, whenever it doesn't uh, hurt the melody or make the song sound too weird, you can always substitute a dominant 7th chord by another dominant 7th chord, a tritone apart. Okay, and tritones, remember, are inversions of each other. So you can always go to and fro, you know. You can get some very interesting chord progressions. Just like the chromatic slide, which you can use pretty much all the time even the tritone substitution you can use quite a few times not all the time but quite a few times another amazing thing about the dominant seventh chord is that every single note apart from the four notes which it contains seems to go well with it all but one i would say now check this out if i play g seventh now what are the remaining notes well there are four notes already in the bank because g7 has one major third perfect fifth flat seven there are so many more notes right for example what about an a sounds beautiful in fact we call that a ninth what about a flat sounds good as well we call that a nine flat that's A sharp. What do we call that? We call that a 9 sharp. Okay. B is already repeated. G is already repeated. So between the root and the third, all those notes sound beautiful, doesn't it? While if I do this with a major 7th chord, it sounds a bit chaotic, right? Even with a minor 7th chord, but with a dominant 7th, But with the dominant 7th chord, the 9th flat just sounds really beautiful. Uh, unlike the major 7th and uh, the minor 7th, right? Now if you take the 9th normal, sounds very grand. And then you have your 9th sharp. It's very spicy. Now if you take the root, 3rd, 5th, that you don't need to play. Now, between the 3rd and the 5th, what is there? You have the C, that would form 11th, uh, and then you have your C sharp, that would form 11 sharp, 11, 11 sharp. Okay, so pretty much every note so far is working, and then you can go above the 5th, you can do, what's that? That's a 13 flat or a 5 sharp. And then you can do your 13, which is your 6th above. F we already have, and only the F sharp. Kind of changes the function of the chord. And it sounds very dissonant. So all but F sharp, or all but the major 7th interval, will work with the dominant 7th chord. So it's almost an anything goes chord. You can do anything over it. Okay, so if I take... G7th in the 
left hand I'm voicing voicing it like this 1 7 flat 3 i can do all your intervals there 9 flat 9 and just to explain these numbers a bit 9 11 11 and 13 9 is basically the same as the 2 so that would be a with respect to g but played uh, an octave higher or a better way to put it is it's used alongside the 7 so a ninth interval will be used or will be called 9 only when there is a 7 in the chord so there is a 7 hence we call it 9 otherwise you can probably call it an add 2 or a, a, a suspension will remove the third from it so i have a video in the description which explores the differences between add chords sus chords and uh, extension chords so do check that out in the description after this one yeah so the 9 would be the 2 played alongside the 7th flat then a 9 flat would be 9 minus 1 chromatic step that's nine sharp or also you can call it as an augmented third played above the nine okay then you have your 11 you could also call it the four but officially 11 because there's a seven flat then there's a 11 sharp which is very spicy as you can hear then you have your 13 which you can voice differently of course and then you have your 13 flat or what i like to call as a 5 sharp it's easier to just remember it that way and you can call the resultant chord also as a 7 sharp 5 okay so those are all your extensions so they pretty much all work with respect to a dominant 7 chord so if you're composing a song and if you're trying to compose the melody the the tune of the song you can really explore like you can make a tune la ra ra re ro ro ra re ra that's the flat 9 or do ra do re ra re ta that would be your 11 with the 9 la that's your 9 oh that's your 11 to that will be your 13 and all of that seems to work well that's your flat time so here's a scenario where i'm making a melody with a sharp nine flat nine and then finally resolving it because this could be the five of the one in in this case g is the five of c so c minor so right so you can use all these extensions while composing a melody line or even when you're considering to reharmonize the song where you're given a chord chart and you want to make these chords you know sound a lot more interesting than what it is printed so you could look at this as altered chords or just whenever you have a seventh chord you want to make it a lot more uh, uh, sophisticated so coming to point number 4 i'm calling this secondary usage this is basically the use of secondary dominance and i'm not going to spend too long on this here because we've done a very detailed lesson we link that up in the description for you so secondary dominant is basically a dominant seventh chord which you can use outside the scale outside your key but then it resolves back to a chord or a diatonic chord of the key so if you take g major it's 5 is d now only the 5 chord of the major scale will be a dominant 7th chord so that will be d7 and that is what we call as a primary dominant the d dominant d7th dom chord primary dominant just resolves back to g major la da 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 but what if you want another dominant chord to resolve to a minor in a normal song you'll just be playing a minor in the diatonic spectrum g tararantaram maybe a b minor parareratam parareratam but what can be used alongside this a minor you ask yourself what is the 5 of a that 5 will resolve to a minor or else a major so a b c d e english a b c d e so e 7th will resolve to a minor 
So you can actually bring in a seventh chord even though it's out of the scale as long as it just resolves back to a chord from the scale. So G major, E, A minor. Now I want to do the same thing for B. Na, 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 na. That's F sharp going to be because B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp. You need to know your circle of fifths. That will be very helpful to quickly get these fifths. So, na, na. now I want to go to C. What goes to C? Na, da, 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 da. G7 takes you to C. Uh, and then, la, da, 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 da. so we've done A to the D. Now what's the next chord? E minor. What's E's fifth? B, right? B to the E minor. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, F sharp diminished you can remove from the study because it's already a very unstable chord. Major and minor chords are stable. So just in a nutshell, D to the G, E to the A minor, F sharp 7th to the B minor, G 7th to the C major, and then A 7th to the D major. B7 to the E minor. So here's a scenario where you're taking pretty much the same dominant 7th chord, but you can use it from even outside the scale as long as it comes back to a chord which is in the scale. This is what we call a secondary dominance, okay? So the last thing I'd like to point out about the dominant 7th chord is if you play a G7, what is the feel? Is it a major or is it a minor feel? Now there are two scales, two blues scales which work really well with this chord. So if I take, before I do the blues scale, even the pentatonic scales will work. So if I take the G major penta, that's one, two, three, five, six. These are your scale steps. If I add the blues note, which is the three flat, becomes the major blues scale, right? It works pretty well with the G dominant 7 chord. But now what about the G minor pentatonic? Even that works. So the minor pentatonic as well as the minor blues the major pentatonic as well as the major blues works really well with the same chord. So it's probably the only chord in music where both the major and the minor scales seem to work. Uh, of course, playing it with the bluesy flavor would would embellish all those tensions or those extensions like the 9 flat and the 9 sharp. Let me demonstrate this with a 12 bar blues example where I'm just going to toggle or alternate between the major and the minor blues scales and mind you this will not be the major and minor blues formed from those chords. I'm just on the key of G. So I will experiment between G major blues and G minor blues and amazingly enough this will work well with all the three dominant 7th chords of the blues progression. That's G7 C7 and D7. So the same G major penta and minor penta will work pretty much in tandem with the entire 12 bar sequence. So starting with the major blues over the G7. Minor. Minor, major, Okay, so time to revise the lesson before we conclude. First off, a dominant 7th chord, you could use it in tandem with another dominant 7th chord which are chromatically apart from your target. So G7, A flat 7, G or F sharp 7, G. You can even do tritone inversions, tritones as I told you are pretty much the same chord or the same function and they share the same thirds and sevenths. So G and D flat are tritone buddies, so to speak. And then all the tensions work except for the major seventh, of course. Nine, flat nine, sharp nine, eleven, sharp eleven, 
13. That's your sharp 5, augmented 5th or flat 13. And that's it. There's nothing left to, to even check. Everything works. Uh, secondary usage we talked about. So you could use dominant 7th chords to go back to diatonic triads. So if you're in the key of G, you can spice things up with a F sharp dominant. Even though it is never even close to G major, it resolves back to a B minor. And uh, last but not least, we talked about the improvisation aspects of the dominant 7th chord you can use the G major penta or the G minor penta primarily because they contain all of those usable intervals minus the F sharp so if you take G major blues it has all those colorful intervals and even G minor blues you know, you have your sharp 11 in there. And you have your sharp 9, your raise 9. Right guys, thanks a ton for watching the video. We've covered a lot of theoretical stuff, so it might help to get my handwritten notes on Patreon. You can head over to the link in the description. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. So whenever a new lesson uh, comes your way, you'll get a notification, which is pretty obvious. Also let us know in the comments what you'd like to learn next. Cheers.